What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. As you can see on the screen, we have signed a couple of players for this Russian League tournament. I'm actually running out of time to play the Russian League tournament. We signed Inform Promes for 12,000 and Inform Shatov for 15,000. Uh, Promes was super cheap because he's got a better card and uh, Shatov was relatively cheap. Picked him up for 15k, still selling for 18k. I want to win the tournament and sell him before his price comes back down and probably goes lower. And then the other four players we've got in the team, Musa, Denisov, uh, Tarasov and Popov were all untradeables that we got in free packs. So I built this team, as you can see on the screen now, we've got our Bundesliga defence. And when we go into games, we're going to just change that midfield trio instantly for like Royce, Aubameyang, Vidal, anyone that would fit in that team regularly um, so that we can keep them on the fitness levels. Now, this guy that I come up against, first opponent, has got four team of the season players, Dumbia, position change, Hulk, uh, Eremenko, a really nice team. And it was a really nice game. And as we uh, watch some of the gameplay of this first game, um, let me just address two things that uh, continue to come up recently on um, on my videos. One of them is because of me, and that's the fact that I don't have face cam. And as I explained in the last video, but I'm sure there will still be some people that didn't watch that video yet, or you know just didn't watch that video. Um, this uh, is it, whilst I'm at AA's, it's just remarkably easier and saves me considerable amounts of time to not do face cam on post-game commentary. So I hope you guys can understand and appreciate that. But any live videos in the RTG and any, uh, you know, as soon as I get home next week, um, it will be all uh, all face cammed up. And secondly, uh, th there seems to be a, th a, a, a misconception that I don't do anything with AA. Um, for those of you that watch his vlog channel, I know a lot of you do. Uh, he mentioned in his vlog that I didn't go to the mall with him one time because I was, I was at home working. What you guys got to understand, when he goes out, when he does his vlogs and, and goes on his excursions, he's getting his video for the second channel by being out of the house. For me to get these videos for you for this second channel, I have to be indoors playing FIFA. I can't get this footage if I'm out at the mall or here, there and everywhere. So for those of you that keep telling me to go out, I go out plenty. I appreciate your concern. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in a good spot and I'm, I'm happy with the way my days work and I'm happy keeping my leisure time private and my work time, you know, per, like, uh, I guess, personal to you guys. So that's where that's at. But anyway, we go 5-1 up in the uh, first round there. This opponent, he was, you know, he's been a bit of a dick through the, some of the gameplay. Hence the reason I, I shushed him, I think, at 3-1. And then after that, I don't know what happened. I, the, the FIFA 11, the Penthes came back, started putting some skill moves on, scored a lovely couple of goals with Promes. And um, overall, I, I wasn't really going to play this tournament. I did mention to you guys in the last video, I didn't think I was going to play it. And I also mentioned, like, I'm not sure what EA are going to do after the, you know, after everything's said and done. But obviously, the, uh, the charity shield, sorry, community shield is on today. Uh, I don't know the score yet. It's before the game's kicked off. And if if there's like, let's say Zlatan scores a hat-trick, are we going to see a special card from the Community Shield? Are they going to start with that? So is there going to be stuff in packs straight away? Who knows? Now, due to the fact that I don't have a fitness team with Russian players, I do have to go into Division 2 to keep playing. So I'm actually using my second team for... Uh, for Division 2, and we come up against a guy who's won the footies, Royce and Aubameyang, which always puts that thing in the back of my mind where I'm like, okay, crap, this guy's been good enough to win that tournament three out of ten times. Let's see what we can do. And things started off really well for us. Hammers putting it down to Conor Plianka. I absolutely love Conor Plianka. I've been looking at so many ways to fit Kono, Royce, Aubameyang, and Ben Arthur into teams. And although I can do it, if I put Aubameyang up front, Royce at right forward, Kono at left forward, um, Tony Kroos at central centre midfield and then Krajkoviak at left centre midfield and then Ben Arthur at right centre midfield. I can then go and build a, you know, a La Liga and Syria, sorry, a League One um, defence. But I just, I, I would rather have two teams than play with one team where there are players in the team that I just don't want to play with. And the players that I just wouldn't want to play with would be Krajkoviak, Tony Kroos. Like, not because I think there's anything wrong with them, and, and especially with Kroos, like, we could easily put together a, um, a uh, you know, a footies Tony Kroos or an, uh, an inform and upgraded version, an I-man of the match, etc., um, and but it's it's just I like playing with players I like playing with and and again that's what comes down to a lot of what we see here in this road to glory 
is me doing what I like to do in FIFA, encouraging you guys to do what you like doing in FIFA and figuring out a way of making it fun and making coins at the same time so we can uh, you know, get the players that we so richly uh, would enjoy. Now, in terms of the players that we would enjoy, I have got about, I think I added up about 560,000 coins worth of players in the club if I sold them all all at once, which is absolutely spectacular. Yes, I could afford a Ronaldo or a Messi. No, I'm not going to buy a Ronaldo or a Messi. It's Maybe it's the sort of thing that I'll do right at the end of the series is sign Ronaldo. But if you guys do want to see Ronaldo in the club, we can make it happen. Um, it wouldn't be impossible. I absolutely love Aubameyang in this game, by the way. He's so good. Like, honestly, he's just... he he. You know when people say, like, oh, handicap is against me. Momentum is against me. Scripting is against me. Oh, my God. How did my defender tackle him and he got the ball back? Oh, my God. This, oh my, like, Aubameyang just causes that as a problem. Like, whether it's his gold card, his footies card, his team of the season card, his absolutely stupid pace. And even for my opponent, as you see him score that goal there, it just creates problems but yeah if you guys want me to sell up and get Ronaldo we can do it and and a good way to do that would probably be to uh you know we could play Ronaldo left forwards um Aubameyang striker Royce right forwards we could then go ahead and put Connor Plianka into centre midfield on seven chem and play uh like Modric or James Rodriguez in central centre midfield okay Marco Royce now is going to be off chem if we put Ben Arthur in uh, the centre mid. But, you know, there is a possibility to sign Ronaldo or sign Messi. And what a great way that would actually be for the end of the, uh, you know, the end of the series. Not that I'm considering ending it soon, by the way. Anyway, guys, you know, for me, there's a long, long way to go in this series yet. Um, one of the things I still want to do, which I haven't done, is win Division 1 as we go back into the Russian tournament. And once again, we come up against a person who has won Royce and Aubameyang. And what's interesting is I'm seeing people with Royce and Aubameyang more than I'm not, which is genuinely surprising to me. The amount of threads that I saw where people couldn't win them, the amount of people that tweeted me saying I couldn't win them, the amount of people in the comment section suggesting to me that they couldn't win them, and then I see them basically every game and I'm just like, wait, was everybody lying all at the same time? Because that's what it seems like to me. But we take a really nice lead, scoring a really, really good goal with Musa. Um, my opponent here cap caps the ball on the 87th minute as a counter-attack. And once again, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Like, look at the fitness of Shatov. Look at the fitness of Aubameyang. I don't know how he still got that much energy. It just goes to show that he really didn't do much through this game. And he just scores a great goal with him. And it was a great goal. But yeah, so for this Road to Glory, for me, any new tournament that comes out, I'm going to try and win it. I still obviously want to win Division 1 and get that kit. And then building like a team with Ronaldo in or Messi, because Messi is the highest rated player in the game, uh, who's not a legend, would be, you know, an option, something I'd definitely be interested in doing. And now that the, the Football League is back and next weekend the Premiership is back and, you know, football is back, we are going to start seeing some good things in packs again. You know, good players in packs, um, transferred informs. If, like, you know, if next weekend BPL starts and the transferred Pogba, which looks likely to happen, scores a hat-trick, you're going to get yourself a special Man United Pogba card, which is going to be absolutely spectacular. So there's still a lot to come. I'm just hoping that they do something with the tournaments that's not this. Because having six players in one team for a tournament is kind of irrelevant uh, because you can sub three of them out and then three you can always find three OP players in every league as we come up against another superstar team. Um, and to only offer a mystery pack is a bit crap. You know what I would love? The fact that they've done this 10 tournament thing, what I would much prefer is if they put a tournament together that, let's say, has no you know no, no rating or let's say you have to have bronze players in all 11 and uh, subs and with this tournament you get five tries to win it and if you win it you get a 100k pack and then after that you get nothing or you get a mystery pack or you just get coins because then it's like okay thank you EA you're giving us stuff make the 100k pack untradeable you know make the tournament restrictions whatever you like but give us something you know as Modric there scores an absolute worldie and for a gold player I would be happy, and I did this in FIFA last year and the year before, with gold teams, sometimes, quite often, gold players are just my favourite by the end of the game. Modric, uh, you know, Vidal, Boateng, Ramos, all these players I use, they're just gold, and they're players that I could have used pretty much in day one 
if uh, if I got the coins together. And one of the things I'm excited to do for FIFA 17 is use and abuse everything at the start to build a really strong team before going into online divisions. Um, you know, people keep asking me, am I going to do a Road to Glory in FIFA 17? Of course I am. This channel, uh, although I will still be uploading apps to this channel when I get back to the UK, this channel will be my FIFA 17 Road to Glory channel. And uh, I'm going to take you guys through a whole year of a journey rather than... When did we start this? Did we start this in like March, I believe? Maybe even, uh, m maybe even April? You know, this is like a four-month Road to Glory. Imagine what we could do if we had all 12 months available to us from day one and uh, what we could get to. So, you know, I'm really excited in FIFA 17 to start playing the offline stuff straight away, seeing what we can get and, and building an OP team that's going to carry us throughout the whole year. Like, I'm genuinely excited for that. Now, after I uh, won that game... I couldn't find a game in the semi-final of the tournament and uh, instead I thought, you know what, let me try go for an offline draft. The way, that, um, the way that consumables are priced right now, which is absolutely ludicrous for a price, let's build an offline draft. And the way I do my offline drafts, for those of you that don't know, for those of you that don't remember, or for those of you that just haven't seen the video because you're a new sub to the channel, first of all, welcome to the channel. And second of all... Um, the way I do the offline drafts is I put it on beginner, I'll go and score a goal, stand in the corner and wait for the game to finish. There is the chance that you will get a, um, a, a game at amateur. If the game comes in at amateur, the best thing to do then is to just score like four or five goals and then just let the game play out. It's going to take a little bit longer, but as long as you like skip the replays and, and when you get a goal kick, just punt it up the field, you're going to be absolutely fine. Um, but the way I do it is I'll play to the final if the final is at beginner level, I'll score the own goal, I'll stand in the corner, no problem. If the final is at amateur level, I'll quit the final and get the prize for losing the final. Now, recently, I've actually been super unlucky in losing the, the final offline. Um, one of the biggest things about losing the final in offline is the fact that you can get pretty damn good prizes actually better prizes than for winning the final which is crazy but we've got like 30,000 coins and with that 30,000 coins there's nothing for that much that I really want to add to the team right now uh, you know what I would like to do rather than that is build up more money build up more coins you know once we sell promise again and chat off again are gone uh, we'll be back up to like 50,000 coins so you know we're going to have the option to uh, play out the offline draft considerable number of times. We could even throw in an online draft. The only thing is, like, if you do lose in the first or second round of the online draft, you've lost, you're going to basically lose out on your coins. If you make it to the semi final of the online draft, that's the same prize as winning the final of the offline draft, which I actually think is a very fair representation. I think EA, I think the, the prices, the prizes of the drafts are wrong as a whole. But I do think that saying to people, getting to the semi-final, so winning two games in a row and then losing, is equivalent to the same as winning the offline draft. Because if, if the offline draft was that much better than the online draft for prizes, people would just sit there and spam it on beginner and make essentially unlimited profit. And that's just ridiculous. You know, that's just ludicrous. So one thing I am noticing as well, and actually something that somebody messaged me on uh, on Twitter yesterday, was that there seems to be like... Far less consumables coming and appearing in the uh, in the bronze packs, and I couldn't agree more. When I was first started the bronze pack method, I was literally making coins every single pack. Maybe one in ten packs, I wasn't. I was getting unbelievable amounts of squad fitness cards. I was getting a load of fitness cards that were just selling, and I just kept getting lucky and lucky and lucky. And it might well have just been luck, but recently I tried the the bronze pack method yesterday whilst I was waiting for a video to render out. And in four 400 coin packs, I got one fitness card and that's it. So I struggled to make money back on any of those. I got one 100 coin unlock, one 250 coin unlock. I got one BPL player that sold and one uh, La Liga player that sold for 200 coins each. But in general, I lost money. So I thought, let me open four 750 coin packs to try and get those squad fitnesses. And once again, I just didn't get anything in return. I got no fitness cards, no squad fitness cards. So right now, I would go as far as saying the bronze pack method is potentially 
not cost effective right now just because there seems to be and it might just be because there's so many consumables of these bronze pack cards on the market you know since i you know suggested people to do the bronze pack method there might be so many fitness cards on the market that ea are like okay let's just remove the fitness cards let's reduce the fitness cards you know uh, and you'll see some of those bronze items there on the screen right now you see some of the stuff didn't sell um some of the stuff did sell but ultimately, what we were left with was an offline draft. And I was really hoping for a good prize. And for me, a good prize would have been three 7.5k packs or a 15k pack. Uh, unfortunately, we again got the worst possible prize for losing in the offline draft uh, final. And that was the jumbo gold pack and the premium gold pack. And interestingly, the jumbo gold pack is quite often the better one for the simple fact that it has, you know, it has all those items in it. What does it have 24 items in it? So, you know, it's easy to make coins back. And we get a nice Isla card there who's a, a position changer, I do believe. We get a healing card. That pace card sells for a considerable amount of coins. It's like 1,500 coins or so for that. Um, but the kit and the manager league there, not worth too much to me. And and then the last pack was the premium gold pack. And there's only, I think, one or two gold players in packs that we could get, which is why I was hoping for either the consumables packs or just lots of packs to try and get some stuff. And one of our rares is unfortunately a silver center back. And one of our rares is unfortunately a kit. So the this draft was not kind to us. I don't think we're going to make profit, but uh, that's how it is. But that's going to be the end of the video, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'm out. Peace.